change this song. This week on Always On, the holiday shopping unboxings continue. And we've set our sights on all things Apple. Stomper! Plus, I enlist some little kids to torture test the iPod Touch. Always On is on. Hey, welcome to Always On. I'm Molly Wood. This is the show where we take a look at the tech that's part of your life and your future. We survived Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but I'm pretty sure your shopping is not done yet. So the unboxings continue, starting with a highly requested gadget, the iPod Touch. Time for a much requested unboxing, the iPod Touch. Now I have a couple of them here because we bought various versions for various torture tests. And I have to point out right away that I'm kind of in love with how the packaging has a little colored apple depending on what color you buy. Like we got a red one and a green one and there's a blue one somewhere. I think we already broke it. But we're gonna unbox the black one, the 32 gig model. Now the iPod Touch, I wasn't that into it when it was announced, but we got so much mail from you guys wanting to know if we would unbox it and specifically torture it, I think because it's such a popular kid's device that I went ahead. Turns out one of our producers is already in love with it, even though I thought if you have an iPhone or an iPad, why would you want it? Okay, maybe I was wrong. Simple packaging, of course, just comes right open. Oh yeah, there's a sticker here. Ooh. I think the black is probably also called slate, but whatever. It's actually really pretty. It's kind of more of like a charcoal. Ooh, that's nice. It has the matte back, which makes the bezel look even smaller on the black one. That's actually pretty fancy. Let's have a look at what's in the box. Pretty straightforward, just your little lightning charging cable. No brick here, no power brick, just the cable. And then of course your ear pods. And then, and I think this is wise, and I think you'll see why when we do our torture test, it comes with a little wrist strap right here. And then watch this, there's this like clever little thing on the back. Bloop, pop it out like that. Slide your wrist strap on and give it to your kid. <laughs> Cute. All right, let's go through the specs on this little guy. The bad news about the iPod Touch, I think, is that it starts at $299 for the 32 gig model. It's $399 for the 64 gig model, which is kind of what everyone wants since this is basically a media player. It runs iOS 6. It weighs 3.10 ounces. It's just basically really small and light. There's a four inch retina display, just like on the iPhone 5. It is an 1136 by 640 pixel resolution. It has Wi-Fi only, no built-in LTE because that would make it a phone. It has Bluetooth 4.0. There's that lightning dock connector, like I mentioned, the touch loop. There is a five megapixel rear facing camera that takes HD video and a front facing HD camera that takes 1.2 megapixel photos. Performance wise, it gets a dual core A5 processor that replaces the last version's A4. So it should be plenty speedy for playing games, which is another selling point for those who want this for their kids. Now, no question the iPod Touch is a super nice device. The screen is beautiful, the size is wonderful. It's just such a weird placement now. It's $30 cheaper than the iPad mini, and it's not a phone like the iPhone. But apparently I am wrong about these concerns because people are buying iPod Touches in droves. I do admit it's a lot lighter and easier to carry than a tablet, and the battery life is really good too. So all right, maybe you guys are right about this one. Now that we've unboxed the iPod Touch, you all wanted us to torture it, so here we go. Time to torture test the iPod Touch. Winter is coming, so I know there's a chance you could leave your gadgets in your cold, cold car. That's what this two hours in the freezer is about to simulate. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, see you later, little buddy. All right, let's get this bad boy out of the freezer, see how it's doing. Alrighty. 
Note we have our product red iPod Touch. A portion of this does go to charity to help uh, with AIDS research. Okay, so everything seems to be working. It really wants to get on the Wi-Fi. Except the home button is a little sluggish, but it is working. So I would say if you do leave your iPod in the car in the frozen tundra, it's gonna be all right. need to change this song. Uh, oh no! Uh, oh no! My iPod! Oh, oh, my iPod did not like that. Let's take these out so I can hear myself talking. Yeah, we have damage. We got some little plastic poking out the side. We have a, see that was really realistic by the way. I have done that a bunch of times. But the screen's not cracked. Let's see if it comes on. Screen comes on, still functional. I'm surprised actually that the home button is still functional because it's coming apart so badly at the bottom here. But it goes. We busted it up. Maybe we should just do a normal drop now. Well, that was dramatic, but I still think we should try it again. Oh, my iPod. Oh, it's so tricky. It, uh, it fell. Okay, well that was a little less porous. We still have this little screw really wanting to come out. No damage to the camera that I can tell. Let's push that back in. Oh, yeah, our screen is all messed up, full of lines there. So now we have pretty much busted our touch screen. It's no longer responding to any touch at all. I confess that I hurled it to the ground, but that is not okay for $300. For two drops to completely destroy this thing, well, it is starting to rain. I was gonna dump this in a puddle for the water test, but I don't think there's any point in that. I think it's sustained so much damage in our drop test that it's pretty much a goner. We managed to well and truly kill our red iPod Touch, but I don't want to deprive you of the full gauntlet of torture tests. So we bought another one, and we're about to put it in the oven. Once again, this is simulating what might happen if you left your iPod in a hot car for a while. Now we do a little hotter, then your car is going to get 200 degrees, but only for an hour. Only. Good luck, iPod. Time to rescue the iPod. All right. Oh, I hope it's okay. I can smell it. Not in like a yummy bread way either. In a totally toxic, I can't believe I do this in my own home way. I don't see any obvious melting. All right, not even angry temperature warning, so I'm just gonna let it cool off for a little bit. Ooh, that is hot. And uh, see if it comes back to life. So I accidentally bumped it while I was seeing if it was cool, and it gave me a temperature warning, but now it looks like it's just coming on and trying to seary me. Oh, I was hoping I would get the temperature warning again. It must have been a relic, but it looks like it is back on. It's definitely on the Wi-Fi. Seems pretty responsive. After about 10 minutes of cooling, which is not surprising because it's really thin. It's not like it's gonna retain a lot of heat. I would say iPod Touch has no problem with the hotness. So the iPod Touch can't really handle a drop. Later in the show, you'll find out whether it can handle a bunch of rambunctious children. Before that though, I am going to unbox a pretty hot little laptop, the new MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina display. 
Today, we are unboxing the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. You may remember that we unboxed the 15 inch model in the first episode of Always On. Back then, we had to borrow the one that the labs guys from New York got, but now we have enough money to buy our own. My husband and my name on it. Packing list. All right, and I'm coming up in the world because I still have my like box cutter with my name on it. Let's check it out. MacBook Pro. That's a pretty heavy box, I'm not gonna lie. It feels pretty beefy. They do packaging well. Here's our little box. Power brick, a little extra cable there, instructions. No CDs in the box, of course. Why would there be? It, oh! <laughs> this is heavy. I mean, it's not that heavy, but it feels heavy compared to an Air because it's a 13-inch laptop and we've all kind of gotten used to that really Air-sized thing. It's a much beefier laptop. Definitely has that pro feel. Oh, yeah, ooh, okay. Let's open it up and see if it can come on so we can check out the <gasps> Retina display. While I get it all set up, let's do the specs. The MacBook Pro with Retina Display starts at $1,699, and it goes up rapidly from there. It has that 2560 by 1600 display, which looks uh, pretty darn good. The base model has a 2.5 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5 processor with eight gigs of onboard RAM. The base model has a 128 gig solid state flash drive. You're probably not going to want that considering that you're likely a photographer if you're the MacBook Pro Retina's target market. You'll want to upgrade to 256 gigs for an additional $300. There's also a 512 gig option or 768 gigs. That one will cost you an additional $1,300. The MacBook Pro weighs 3.57 pounds. It has a 720p FaceTime HD camera. That looks very nice. Two Thunderbolt ports and USB 3, HDMI out, and an SDXC card slot for those photographers who might want to use it. It has a full-size backlit keyboard and it ships with Mountain Lion. I was curious about the weight of this thing, so I brought down the 13-inch MacBook Air to compare, and I have to say that they actually feel pretty similar in weight, and the MacBook Pro is a little more compact than the Air. Look at that. It's like a little bit wider because of all that skinny bezel, I guess. Obviously, the MacBook Pro with Retina display is a super nice laptop. I'm curious about who the target market is because, frankly, the pro photographers I know were hoping for a 17-inch laptop and not a 13-inch laptop. And also, that price, I mean, it's one thing to pay a premium for Apple products, but $16.99 is the base. $19.99 for, let's be honest, the model that you're going to want at minimum. The MacBook Air 13-inch and the MacBook Pro 13-inch without Retina display start at $11.99. That's a crazy premium for a display that, frankly, is beautiful, but just not that necessary. I'm not saying I'm not going to totally enjoy using this guy for a couple of weeks and I'm excited to take it home, but I wouldn't pay for it. Time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, I'll unbox the Mac Mini and the new oddly shaped Slingbox 500, plus the conclusion of our iPod Touch torture test featuring some hopped up little kids. Now there's all this talk about the iPad mini and the new iMacs and the new Mac this and that, but hardly anybody talks about the humble Mac mini, or as I like to call it, the perfect home theater PC. We have one here and we are about to unbox it. All right, the Mac mini is such an interesting little computer. It has pretty good specs and a ton of storage, and I assume that they're still making it to be kind of a home theater computer, but meanwhile, they're trying to sell you Apple TV boxes. In fact, look at how they highlight the connectivity on the box. Right off the bat, they're like USB, HDMI, Firewire, Thunderbolt. This thing, it's meant to be plugged in, empowering things. Let's get out of here. It's kind of a little brick. Pretty heavy, actually. It's kind of funny, it's, it's the graveyard of lost connectors. Like they're still doing Firewire? 
only on the Mac Mini. Killed it everywhere else. Oh, look at this. It's like a really big Apple TV. Oh my God, it's so funny. It's like a computer. Look at that. Oh geez. <laughs> Kind of a slippery computer. All right, there we go. Simple, sleek, media receiver. Let's find out what we have in the box before we do our specs. Got our little instructional packet dealy. Power. Is this really the power brick for this thing? It's so little. Wow. I have to say, that doesn't seem like it would be a huge feature, but that's a huge feature. There's no massive brick here. That is contributing to a tidier home theater cabinet, and I approve. You've also got a dongle, actually, an HDMI, looks like DVI to HDMI dongle, which is pretty useful. So clearly, I mean, as soon as you start taking this thing out of the box, you get the idea that this is meant to be part of your home theater setup. It's just so interesting that they don't talk about it. They talk about Apple TV when this is so much more flexible. All right, on to the specs. The Mac Mini comes in two versions. There's a 2.5 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5 that starts at $599, or you can get a 2.3 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i7 Ivy Bridge, that one's $799. It's configurable to up to 2.6 gigahertz, by the way, on that quad core model. It weighs 2.7 pounds. It's about an inch and a half tall. It's 7.7 .7 inches wide and deep, so it's a little square. The 599 model has 500 gigs of storage. Storage, the 799 model actually has a built-in terabyte. It has integrated Intel graphics and four gigs of onboard memory. That's configurable up to 16 gigs. Let's get to the ports. There is Thunderbolt. You have a Firewire 800 port, four USB 3 ports, an HDMI port, an SDXC card slot, so you could offload your photos onto this device, gigabit ethernet, audio in and out, and of course, an IR receiver. Now, one thing you'll note is that there is no optical drive on the Mac Mini. Apple is expecting you to download or buy all of your movies and TV from, most likely, iTunes. Also note that it does not come with any input devices, no keyboard or mouse, so you're gonna have to bring your own wireless keyboard or Apple's $69 gesture accessory if you want to use the new OS X gestures. Now the lack of optical drive for me is the biggest knock on the Mac Mini. As long as all your media is in the cloud, then I guess you're okay with this. But to be honest, I was hoping to buy this and then have a Blu-ray drive built in so I could watch movies on a big cinema display and that could be a whole TV all on its own. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be doing that. But if you own all of your iTunes movies, download from Amazon, things like that, this is a great web-enabled, fully functioning computer to make part of your home theater package. Check out our CNET review on that and happy shopping. Also today, I am unboxing the new Slingbox 500. Remember Slingbox? It's like the little box that you can take with you anywhere and stream your own TV to wherever you are. It's an awesome gift for college kids who want to share their parents' cable subscriptions, and it's also a big hit with sports fans because if you're on the road, you can still watch the home team play. All right, let's check it out. Plus, in a sea of set-top boxes that bring you like a whole bunch of content, this one just brings you your TV at your house from your DVR, from your DVD player. It's pretty slick. Watch your TV anywhere. Good old fashioned bubble wrap. Not the greenest packaging. Bust open our bubble tape. Okay, Slingbox 500. Now, the big change between the old Slingbox and this one is that this one streams in 1080p, so high def streaming, which is pretty slick. Oh, look at this. Aren't you a funny little shape? It's like, Infinity or the wave. See, I'm not actually a fan of this. I understand that you want components to maybe stand out a little bit or you're tired of building black boxes, but this is a home theater component. You know where it's gonna go? On a shelf with a bunch of other black boxes. So why don't you make it stackable? <sighs> Let's get to the specs. The Slingbox 500 has built-in Wi-Fi, the 1080p high-def streaming I mentioned earlier. It can connect to your DVR, your cable set-top box, or your satellite receiver. 
On the back, you'll find a USB port, a network port, HDMI in and out, component inputs, and composite inputs. It's also compatible with your DVD or Blu-ray player and, this is handy, video security cameras. It does not have a monthly fee, and like Apple TV, you can use it to send photos and music on your mobile device to your television, although you cannot stream video. It costs $299. One bummer, even if your DVR has multiple tuners, Slingbox still can deliver only one output. So if someone else is home and watching The View, you're gonna have to fight for viewing rights. The mobile apps cost $15, also kind of a bummer. They're available for iOS and Android. I got so distracted by the unusual shape that I forgot to look what else is in the box. So, because I know it comes with a lot of cables, I wanna dig in here. We have our quick start guide see what we have in terms of cables. Power. That's an easy one. Do you come with HDMI? You do. That's actually pretty nice that it comes with an HDMI cable. You've got component and composite cables, also pretty nice. So you pretty much have everything you need, plus your remote control, which even comes with batteries. Nice touch. It's over here. Some more audio and optical cable-ry, it looks like. This appears to be possibly an aux cable. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. And then your network cable. So this is a pretty impressive little package. You definitely have everything in this box that you would need to get up and running once you download your $15 apps. I will say that $2.99 is a little expensive for Slingbox considering all the set-top boxes out there that deliver content and all the ways to get content on the go via apps. That said, like I mentioned earlier, any college kid on your Christmas list is going to love this guy. So those gadgets are both good holiday gift ideas. Now let's get back to our iPod Touch torture test and find out if that's going to make your list. So it seemed only obvious for the iPod torture test that the wild card should be giving the iPods to children and asking them to not be careful while they play games and have snacks. So I have Sam and Ella and Dash and Eli. And you guys are all going to play games, right, on our fancy iPods. Yep. So I want to tell you the rules. But which one of them? I know, you're going to have to share. And then there's, there's a rule for today, OK? So while you're drinking your juice and eating chips and fruit and pizza and playing with iPods, I want you to not be careful. Yeah. That's right. I remember that Don't rule. Don't be careful. All right, are you guys hungry? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You play some, and you want to play some games? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now don't forget to share, grab this but go, I'm gonna get out of your way and let you play. Good job, good job. Follow Eli. Go, go, go. Run, run, run. Oh, good job. Stop her. Yeah, throw it to the couch. All right, guys, now we're gonna play a pretty crazy game. We're gonna, I know. We're gonna put the two iPods on this plastic and then we're gonna, add, we're gonna, I know, this is totally yours. It came from your house. Yep. And then we're gonna spill juice That's on them. It. Put them in the middle. And let's go get our juice. We have to turn this off. We should turn them on, actually. It's much more, oh, that's a sticky iPod. Wow. Okay, ready? Oh, we got the video playing. That's excellent. Okay, come on over and spill your juice on the phone. Good job. One more. Yeah. Oh, Dash, you wanna try it? Oh, disaster! Good job, everybody. All right, everyone, take a break. Back up. Let's do okay. 
They're still okay. Look, they're still going. <gasps> Look, Super Y's still playing. Do you think they're pretty tough? Yeah. yeah. I, think so too. I mean, you jumped on them and threw them, and look, they're still going. All right, we're going to get them out and dry them off. You guys can take a break and have some snacks, okay? Great well, job, well, everyone. Why well, you can just lay down? I might have to lay down. I'm exhausted after that. Good job, guys. Look at that. We have two juice soaked, Cheeto encrusted, grease covered iPod touches that, at least as of this second, are totally still entertaining children. Booyah! Yeah. Now we went ahead and scraped off all the Cheeto dust and wiped off the grease, and these things are still going strong. Pretty impressive. I think you can trust your kids with them, because your kids aren't going to do what ours did. Come on. All right, let's check out some of your mail. Let's jump right into your emails. I love Always On, and especially Molly Wood. I have a torture test scenario for you. I have seen it happen, but fortunately it wasn't me. Honest, not me. While I work in the tech field, I live to ride my horses. Unfortunately, you know the phone must go too. So here's my very real scenario. While fumbling with their cell phone, a rider's attention is focused on an exciting text. A deer leaps out of the woods suddenly, sending the horse into a frenzied bucking fit. Cell phone goes flying as rider grabs leather in an attempt to survive the mayhem and perhaps regain control of the horse. By the time the rider gets the horse under control, they are yards and yards away from the original explosion site. Where is the phone? Under some mud, muck, leaves, debris, and sadly, with a nice hoof print. How about that for a torture test? Anonymous. Wow. I'm kind of disappointed there's no horse poop involved, but otherwise, I think we need to recreate that. Also, I've never heard that phrase grabs leather before, and I did grow up riding horses. It's new. Moving on, Neil writes in, I noticed that whenever you have an unboxing, you throw everything on the ground. Oh yeah. Who is picking up after you? I think this is really unrealistic because whenever I unbox my stuff, I keep the packaging together for recycling or keeping. From Illinois, Neil Tewksbury. P.S. Love the show. I watch it every week and would love to be part of the mailbag. Really? You think it's unrealistic? Like when you're watching an action movie and a motorcycle is riding on a moving train unrealistic? It's okay. We pick it up after we throw the stuff on the ground. Actually, usually I pick it up. I don't litter. Next up, a lovely compliment for Jeff Kanata. Kind of. I don't want to overstate this, so I'll be guarded. Is it me or is Jeff the most ruggedly handsome, elegantly muscled, intellectually charming guy in tech news and reviews? I find myself awash in his relaxed manner and witty-eyed delivery that I end up missing the actual content of his torture tests. I think it would be more effective to get a run-of-the-mill tech type guy to perform the tests. Jeff is far too distracting for this visual video format. You ain't too bad yourself, sister from Chad in Orlando, Florida. P.S. Please don't carry out my suggestion. Jeff is an unexpectedly nice addition to the show. I want you to know I forwarded this email to Jeff because I assumed it would make his day, and it did. Thank you, guys. And thank you for all the awesome feedback, including the action-packed horse riding stories. Love it. Email me, always on at CNET.com. You can also find us at Google+, Facebook, and, of course, Twitter. That's it for this week, everyone. Next week on Always On, many more product unboxings for your holiday shopping needs, including the new Nook HD, plus a future tech story about a glove that you can wear to help you get in shape. See you next week on Always On. It's like a strange lady just asked me if I want some candy. I like the Cheeto dust on there that I'm seeing. That's good. Okay, nice work. It's looking good. Looking like a disaster waiting to happen. We're tired.